I would always read descriptions in museums of artifacts like the Sudbury bow here. And it always made me think about people. The bow was taken from an Indian. Well, reading things like that my whole life, I of course always ask myself, well, who was that Indian? What tribe did he come from? Was he Wampanoag? I, I always assume it was a man. What led this man on the path that inevitably led to his death? You know, we know this home invasion took place in 1660 when, in a certain lens of perspective, one could say there were a lot of home invasions going on. And as a result, a massive change for Native peoples that we know inevitably led up to King Philip's War in 1675. A change on the land, environmental changes, uh, massive resource depletion, you know, political shifts, economical change, belief, people, people's very reality was changing. And of course, we can look back at the colonial history of this land and connect the web of these artifacts, dates, and events, and our place in it as history. But I would always try to open myself up to who was that Indian? He was a person just like anyone else, facing situations as they came. A few years ago, I got a chance to reproduce this beautiful self-bow using similar technologies and techniques that our ancestors used at the time. I was hoping to get a better understanding of the materials and the, and the craft of it. And I did. But what really resonates with me the most is the people that gifted me that knowledge, the memories we made along the way. And then it made me think about how many people carried that knowledge through these great times of change and challenge for me to be able to continue it and hopefully pass it on to future generations. And it amazed me how this was one of, if not the only surviving bow from the time period but I could go to people within the community and ask how to make these things. And it connects us through time, through museum artifacts to living memory.